Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have an interesting accessory that is starting its Kickstarter this month. This is the High Dock Docking Station or USB Hub. And it's packing a few different features that I thought would be interesting for us to take a look at. So before we dive into everything that this can do, I just want to point out that this is a sample during the campaign, so I don't know definitively if this is exactly how the packaging is going to look, but I kind of hope that it does because it's very minimalist and it's all recyclable so far. So let's open this thing up and see what we get on the inside. On the inside flap, we get some instructions uh, printed on the top that shows where all the cables are. It gives a email address to contact if you're having issues with it. And then we have the device itself underneath this little cage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Move that off to the side, nothing underneath. And then in here, we have a guide, and that is literally it. So very, very minimalist, all of it recyclable. So our quick start guide folds out just like so, and has everything that we need to know on getting this thing up and running. What we have here is a USB hub that has some unique features that in my mind are designed to be used in a conference room setting. So we do have a USB type C connector. This is not Thunderbolt. And then we have a series of ports throughout the entire device, and then we have what's going on on the top. So in terms of ports on this side here, we have one USB 3.0 and then two USB 2.0. Now that USB 3.0 is a 3.1 port, so five gigabits per second is what they're saying on the Kickstarter page. And then these are about 480 Mbps. Moving along to the other side here, we do have a USB type C slot for power delivery 3.0, so that's 100 watts. And then we have an HDMI port here, and that HDMI port, I believe, is HDMI 2.0, which is 4K HDMI at 30 hertz, and that does come with HDR support. On the bottom, we have uh, some labeling, and that's pretty much it. On the top is probably where this thing really shines. And this is a large speaker and four microphone setup. So it is a 360 degree microphone setup and they claim that that will pick up uh, voices away up to five meters. And that is with noise cancellation. 45 decibels of noise can apparently be generated in the environment and voices can still be picked up loud and clear. That's done with four different microphones built into the device. And we have a very large speaker here that I'm really eager to see how that sounds. But probably the most interesting thing here is this little control panel, which they call the Zero Oops system. And what it is is a series of buttons, and you know that I do appreciate those because they don't click or make any annoying noises that might be picked up. And it allows you to control uh, pretty much every aspect of this device. You can mute the microphone, you can raise and lower the audio of the built-in speaker, you can uh, hang up or answer the calls, you can uh, press pause or play, you can turn on and off the HDMI, and then of course you can mute the speaker. And we can see that all of these are clearly indicated uh, for us here. Uh, in the manual, interestingly, it's called an anti-oops panel, um, but on the Kickstarter page, it's referred to as a zero oops. Those are the basic features of this device. So we're going to go ahead and grab a laptop and start testing out how well this all works. And to do that, I do have a X1 Carbon Gen 5 here that I'm going to turn on and plug this thing into. And while I'm doing that, there is a one thing that I want to point out is, is that this cable here is uh, fixed to the device, which does mean that transporting it uh, without a case or some protection might be a bit of a difficult uh, thing to do over the long term. I'm a little worried about what kind of damage that this will take before it might uh, stop functioning. The Kickstarter page does give you an option to purchase an additional extension cable or an accessory uh, carrying kit 
So those things are available, but I think if I were building a 2.0 of this, I would just have that a, as a USB port. So I would have a separate cable that I could plug in. So the cable going to this doesn't become something that I cannot repair. So we are going to plug this in and immediately we have a series of lights showing up. This is of course for HDMI, which is not plugged in. If we press this, it toggles the microphone on and off. That kills the audio. Uh, there is no indicator that this, uh, the status of this button other than what you see on the display. And then of course we have pause, play, and then raise and lower volume. And this is really cool. Uh, we see a blue LED light indicate the strength of the volume here. That is actually a really nice touch. Um, I will point out that this is about 50% and it looks more like 75, but still, I, I love the intent there. Uh, it would be nice if when you muted it, it went all the way down or something. Just again, some indicator to go with all of the other indicators that it's indeed doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and record using this now. I've got it running Audacity. And this is me, my usual distance away from the laptop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the microphone down here, my lapel mic anyway, and I'm going to walk to the other side of the room, which is about two or three, well, no, it's closer to three or four meters now. And it appears to be picking me up uh, from what I can see in the distance relatively well. And I'm turning my head to the left and the right, so I'm not necessarily facing it. And I'm going to come back in this direction. And I'm actually going to go stand by something noisy, just to see if it's able to pick me up loud and clear. And uh, this is actually standing next to a server uh, stored in the same room. And if you can still hear me and not a hum in the background, that means that that 45 decibel noise cancellation is working the way that it's intended to work. And if I come back over, hopefully things are running just as smoothly and we'll be able to test some playback next. Let's go ahead and test our audio levels. So I've got my sound meter here. Pause and play functions work exactly the way that you would expect them to, which is fantastic. So the next thing that we should test is of course power delivery and then of course HDMI. I have a monitor hooked up uh, just off screen here, which you're gonna see on the secondary camera. And it sounds like this thing is detecting all the drivers and configurations, but I do have screen duplication happening. And of course I can extend that and do whatever. And then if I hit this button here, it kills that HDMI signal. So that could be pretty useful for presentations. Uh, you do get a screen flash on the main display, probably because it's no longer detecting it. I think that port is just being shut off by that button. And then if you press it again, we do have a slight delay of uh, redetection, but overall pretty acceptable. So everything on this device is working exactly the way that I would expect it to at a level that I think is rather agreeable. So with that being said, we should probably start talking about price. Now, the Kickstarter is going on until January of 2023, and this is currently about 140 Canadian dollars. And you know what? If you are going to use every feature here, and uh, that's not actually a bad price, I don't think, to pay for a dock of this ilk. 
Like I said earlier, the one thing that I'd like to see in a 2.0 version is uh, this no longer being hardwired into the device, but just another port. And then I can use whatever USB Type-C cable I want uh, to plug the dock in. That's generally how other companies handle it. I'm not 100% sure why this one is hardwired in. The only thing that I can think of that would make sense as to why is that if you're using this in a conference room where you pretty much expect this not to move, you don't want the cable to get up and accidentally walk away. And in which case, totally makes sense that it's hardwired in. However, I think that the length of cable, the fact that it is hardwired in, means that to me it would only really be useful in a conference room setting. Uh, anything else, you're kind of having to figure out how to transport this safely without putting too much stress on the cable uh, right where it comes out of the device in the back. For $140, if you can get it on Kickstarter, not too terrible. The accessory kit is uh, pretty reasonably priced as well if you want to go uh, full hog. And I just want to uh, thank HiDoc for sending this over to me to show to you. I think they did a pretty decent job with their uh, first effort here, and hopefully they'll be successful and continue to improve their product lineup and uh, keep it at a price point that I think is actually relatively accessible uh, for a docking station of this ilk. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section down below. And if you are looking to uh, support this and get one for yourself at that Kickstarter price, make sure you're checking the description as well uh, so you can get in on that before the Kickstarter closes. One final point, of course, is that while this was sent to me for review, I received no financial compensation and my reviews and opinions remain objective and my own. Thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy, I am going to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, so the next time I get to feature a doc like this, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.